Hi, I'm Dennis. No, I'm sorry. I'm Dennis. I'm here to have a few chats with you, as you know. We're always engaged. Today I'm going to start uh, with this popular belief that when you make a video and you want to make a very, very good engaging video like this one, you need to look directly into the eyes of your audience like I'm doing now. And you know what? That's a lie. People who are saying that are lying and the devil is also a liar. Because I can look away from you and still be talking to you, still be talking sense or tell, talking funny things to you, making you laugh or making you think. So it, it's not whether I look at you or not. But now let me look back at you. Be, not because that's what they are saying, but because that is what I want to do today. Uh, now let's move on. There's this able soccer player, you know, genius on the field, used to score very spectacular goals. Now, this presenter asks him, how do you feel after scoring that spectacular goal? Oh, you know, I'm going to show you my goals. <laughs> if, if you don't understand this language, it means it's long that I've been scoring these goals. I've got a history with these goals, you know. Uh, yeah, really. Uh, this is South Africa. But tomorrow I'll be speaking from uh, United States of America, of course. Where I'll be uh, visiting in Kansas. But I'll be lodging in the... Uh, center in the, 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 the capital city of the USA, which is uh, New York anyway, but this stuff for another day. There's this church service that went on, it's a conference in fact, it went on, you know conferences they take three to four days, now at the end of the fourth day, the reverend or the pastor, whoever it is, makes a closing remark in the form of a motivation to the congregants to go and proceed practicing what they've been taught throughout. The theme of the conference was that uh, God has the final say in everything that you, you, you want to do, all you need to do is to ask him. Lay your plans in front of God. Now the, the, the reverend or the pastor asked this gentleman who has been there since the conference and been listening, has been shouting, Amen, Hallelujah, has been praying. Then the reverend says to this man, now as we are closing, can you tell us what is it that you want God to bless you on? Then this man replies very honestly, says, no, I haven't started thinking about that. Yes, he's been praying for the whole conference, but he hasn't started thinking about what he's praying about. So think about it. Think about it. <laughs> it's not a joke, but it's happening. Now, they say attire makes a man. This is proper English. This is good English. English A, if I can put it like that. It's an old adage. And nowadays, because there is a question of gender, gender parity, we could also stretch it and say attire makes a woman. So that women, women do not revolt against uh, this video presentation. Now, that's another lie. Why? Because there are many people who are immaculately dressed, illegitimately dressed, dressed to kill at a time when they committed an offense. Some pickpocketed, some robbed, some kidnapped and you know what makes it easy 
for people to kidnap or even to hijack and eventually kill the victims is the way they are dressed. In most cases, they are dressed so elegantly that it's easy even for a stranger to trust them and follow in all that they, they, they come up with, the tricks that they come up with, then they end up capturing the poor victim. So, attire, take it from me. As from today, let's change that mindset. Attire breaks. It never makes, but it breaks. Yeah, uh, this man that I want to tell you about is my soccer hero. He used to score spectacular goals. Did I tell you that before? At the end of this game, in question, he had scored two or three goals, but there is this one outstanding goal, and then the, the presenter asked him, uh, tell us, how do you feel about scoring that goal? Kudala siwa shaya lama goal, kudala ngwa shaya, man. Hmm? This means in Zulu, it means it's long that I've been scoring these goals. Kudala ngwa shaya lama goals. <laughs> How do you feel about scoring this goal? Kudala ngwa shaya lama goals. I think you also have something that you have been doing since kudala, ne? So be proud of that. When someone asks you, how do you feel about that? It says, it's long that I've been doing this. Don't tell them how you feel. Just tell them that, Kudala, Ekale. You see. Now let's move on. Let's move on. Really? Uh, politics. I don't like politics for one thing. Politics can pollute your mind. It can make you lame in your thinking. Because when you are in the ruling party, you want to defend what the ruling party is doing, whether it's good or bad. And when you are in the opposition party because you want to outsmart the ruling party, then you want to attack. So politics is like a, any sport, whether it's cricket or soccer, it's either you attack or you defend. Then as you attack and defend, Sometimes you forget about creating jobs, coming with ideas for creating jobs for many people who have faith in your politics. You, you forget about coming with plans for housing more uh, vulnerable people who do not have houses. But anyway, I also like politics because once you are successful, you are elected in whatever position, then life runs smoothly like Nile, water in the Nile River. When you are traveling, it's not here in South Africa, but all over the world, when you're traveling, one car is escorted by how many cars? By 10 cars. It's the minister or the president who wants to visit to the nearest settlement or the nearest point where people are, are living. But the convoy, there must be about eight or 20 cars if the country is rich enough. And those 20 cars, they disturb the traffic, they disrespect the laws of the road they risk because they've got those in in south africa is blue lights in other countries could be orange light or purple i don't know all the countries but when they are moving in that long line like a train then everything else stops because the president or the minister or the mayor wants to arrive at the next village five kilometers away. So, politics is very good. But also, politics is very bad. But those who are in politics, they will tell you, Kudala Swashaya, it's long that we've been here, you can't take us out. Now, uh, oh, I thought 
when I started, I wanted to make jokes for you, but it's difficult to make jokes when there is reality looming around. Uh, you know, uh, there is my uncle. My uncle tells me a very interesting story. His name is David Tirsenga. He's now living in Soshangube, right in Gauteng, Pretoria, in South Africa. I don't forget his stories. He said once, while he was still a learner, a student, and he, sometimes during the weekends when they needed to go and uh, chill out, they ran out of pocket money, he and his friends, because the, the old man and the old woman, the, the parents that, that time, they used to give them pocket money according to specifications. This is for food, this is for travel. Amen. They did. You don't there was a family car that resembled the vehicle of traffic police. And they used to take that car, park it some distance from town and don their caps. I don't know where they got the caps. And they looked, from a distance, they looked like traffic police. And people with problems, with faulty cars, you know how scared they are when they approach the traffic police. They used to pay bribes left and right. And that way, my uncle and this group, they were always having something in their pockets. Uh, it's history now, don't take them to the Truth Commission or to the whatever commission. It was part of streetwise life that time. Uh, let me go back to the question of, we've been talking about this politician, the parliamentarian, the people in government who whisk along in fleshy cars, jamming traffic lights. Now, uh, what is interesting is that in your influential position, you can be accompanied by a convoy, a long trace of cars taking you, one person, to a particular place. And of course, as a politician or as a parliamentarian, as a person of power, you can, if you're a man, you can marry more than one wife. You can have more than one bank account. But what baffles me is that when, when you go home, you don't need a convoy of beds when you go to sleep. You sleep in one bed. And going further than that, when you die, because, yeah, I mean, you'll die. When you die, you don't need a convoy of coffins going down the grave. Only one coffin. So why do we need many cars? Why do we need many people to escort us in many cars? Whereas when we go down, we'll go down in one coffin. No, this is serious. Think about it. Cut the convoy, cut the cost. Because someone doesn't have bread on the table, but you are driving to one place in 100 cars. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, no, no. Let, let's leave that one. Let's leave that one. But while we're still in politics and governments, things are different, you know. There are countries where, you know, road patrol... People doing road patrol, they drive or they fly over air in helicopters. That's how rich some countries are. Just street patrol or town patrol for that matter. But there are countries, countries are not the same. There are countries where the whole national 
force, whether it's a police force or road force, they move in bicycles. They don't even have pistols. They don't even even guns. They just have buttons and shambox. And they are expected to keep order at national level. So that's how different things are. Some countries are good, some countries are bad, some countries are well to do, some countries have nothing. After all, the book of Atlas Sister, the third book of Atlas Sister has put this very clearly that there is time for everything. There is time to be poor, there is time to be rich. So there are times where other people in other countries are rich, times when other people in other countries are poor, times where other governments are poor and other governments are rich. That's gospel clear. Let's move on, let's move on. We're about to finish. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your concentration. Thank you for your appetite. Thank you for your interest in these funny stories. These are funny stories that are not serious. But hey, there are people. There are people who are honored in this world. People who are honored, they are called honorable. Your honor, your majesty, her majesty, his majesty. Her excellency, his excellency. You see, these are titles of high honor. I'm also aspiring. I'm also looking to be one of the honorables or one of the majesties, excellencies, whatever we call them. All those are high-flying titles. But with due respect, all of you, starting from Australia to Zanzibar, A to Z of the world, it will be a very great dishonor if you are honored here on earth. You are called your majesty, whatever title you have, with all those belts, collars, the regalia. And you are not working for that place when you go the, to the other side of life, in heaven. Please don't go to hell. For my sake, go to heaven. We want to continue to honor you there. We don't want to honor you here on earth and we don't find you in heaven. We want to find you there and honor you there. Continue to honor you there. You'll join the holy people there. Imagine sitting just next to the Apostle Paul. Hmm? And we were, were singing. We're singing. We've been honoring here on earth, then we'll be honoring you there. We'll be singing, we'll be dancing. Remember, there is no anger there, there is no, 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 no quarrel, no strikes, no salary demands, no salary increases, no job losses. It's just singing, peace, holy. Then you are not there. Oh, that will be a very big blunder. Be there. Why aren't you there? If you are a judge here on earth, we want you to be a judge there. If you are a landlord here, we want you there. We will join you there. And continue with the mission that we started here. James said, once said the mission to Vienna. So we want to start there. What will have taken to break here on earth? continue to honor you there. You'll be sitting with all the holy men, holy men and women who served God here on earth and were not honored. Some of them were, were, them were stoned to death. No, I'm not being hard on you. I'm just reminding you that it will be, really, it will be a very great Minus a very great dishonor to all of us if you are not there. You're only here on earth, yeah. Where the streets are dusty, muddy, there's a full throttling of life. 
air is filled with smoke from chimneys of factories. We call you honorable, we call you excellency here. And there where everything is speak and span, you are not there. Ah, come on, come on, come on. Be with me on this one. Now, here in South Africa, maybe in Netherlands also, I'm not sure. But I think because Netherlands and South Africa, they share something a little bit in common. Here we've got the Vils. Not the Vilias, the Vil. Not the Toy, but the Toy. Not Colonel, but Colonel. Eh? <laughs> Not Silhouette, but Silhouette. You know. So when you come to South Africa, mind your language or else you'll be trespassing and will have no option but to throw you behind. Behind what? Complete for me. <laughs> I don't want to mention that word. It's not a, a, a very good sounding word, but you'll be there if you don't pronounce these things correctly. This is South Africa. My South Africa. My beloved country. I love South Africa. I'm proud. I'm proudly South African. But also when I go to Zimbabwe, I'm proudly Zimbabwean. Because we are, I mean, we must begin to understand and picture ourselves correctly so as global citizens. Although we must be more global somewhere than in other places. Just like Joe Joel said in his uh, classic story, Animal Farm, that some animals, in fact, all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than the others. So when you're in South Africa and you're South African, South Africa is more equal than other countries to you. Uh, now for today,